Okay, so in this video, we are gonna look at application control. One of the advantages of McAfee, because it works at such a fundamental low level uh, inspecting the URLs, it has the ability to look at kind of matching of information that's going through the payload and be able to identify things within applications that it can then control. Uh, things like this include being able to manage the use of Hotmail or uh, Gmail, being able to stop people from sending emails while still allowing them to receive, or uh, classic ones, Facebook, we can block people posting to Facebook without the, um, the ability of blocking Facebook entirely. We have to understand that there's no magic answer to being able to control uh, settings within applications like Facebook and LinkedIn, and, and this really is about matching URL strings, etc. So with that in mind, we have to make sure that we manage their expectations ourselves, as well as the expectations to the firm when we're promising what this can do. It's quite possible that Facebook or, or one of the other applications will change some of their code, and because of that, it may then stop the application control working and we have to wait for updates, etc. So in this video, we're gonna look at both the built-in application controls, which I'll show you in a minute, as well as using the McAfee community to download uh, controls that are being created by other people. Now, all these application rule sets are really are pre-packed configuration or things that the McAfee gateway can do itself. So in reality, you could write these application rule sets yourself if you spent the time examining the HTTP data that's going to and from the website. I'm going to add an application rule set from the library. So I'm going to select add rules from library and I'm going to select application control and I'm going to select auto resolve and select OK. This is going to create a new application control. I'm going to drag this up to the top and as with all my rules I'm going to unlock the view. I'm going to save the changes. Now, as you remember in the past, the rules are applied to different cycles, both within the uh, get and the request. So there's gonna be some application rule sets that apply to the request side of things. Um, so this can be checked down with uh, downloading, and there's gonna be some rules that relate to the response side, such as uploading. Okay, once we've brought in the application cycles, we're gonna see that there's gonna be some um, applications that have already been pre-configured. So we have blocking Facebook chat, um, we're blocking high risk applications, and we're blocking instant messaging ones. I'm gonna disable all of these for the moment so we can see how we can add new applications. If we come over and look at our lists, we can see under system lists, we have applications. And under here, we have a lot of different categories. So for instance, we come up to email, we can see all these different email um, solutions and here we can see uh, what specifically this application control will do. For the vast majority of these, these may be just blocking the website. Um, you may think to yourself, well, is that the same as blocking the domain? And not necessarily, when you're blocking the domain, you are just looking at the URL itself. What this does allows us to do is kind of uh, go in a little bit more in depth, use the packet matching features of McAfee and be able to both release and block based on um, better information. So come here, we can look at something like Hotmail where we can just prohibit the Hotmail sending service over being able to just allow Hotmail itself. So what we're gonna do is come down to the social networking and we look at LinkedIn. There's lots of different aspects within LinkedIn that we can uh, use to, to manage the application. So we don't just block um, LinkedIn. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use application um, control sets to block LinkedIn mail. So we're gonna give access to LinkedIn, but we're gonna stop people from just using the mail aspect of it. So what we're gonna do now is create a rule to block LinkedIn mail. We're gonna create a new rule. I'm gonna call this block uh, LinkedIn mail. We're going to add from advanced and I'm going to type application and this gives us a number of our application rules. We're going to do application to name 
and I'm going to do application name. I'm going to say if the application equals, and we're going to use the name that we saw from the previous list, so it's called LinkedIn Mail. We are going to block. And we're going to use our application control blocked uh, page. Select finish. So if we try and request our LinkedIn mail, we're going to get blocked. Let's save changes. So as you can see, I have now logged into LinkedIn. So we're very much in the uh, LinkedIn application. Um, so definitely working. Now, if we come over to email, we can see when I try to get into my LinkedIn messages, uh, immediately I am blocked. And if we come back to our application control, we can see that that's because we've uh, we've done this. So if we just disable it for a moment, hit save changes. We return back to if we return back to LinkedIn and go to hit messages. We can now see that the messages are working. Okay. So what happens if you want to do something though that's not actually within the current application control set? Say for instance, I want to block any uploading of attachments into webmail. I have a look through the application control sets and it doesn't seem to be anything specific to do that. Well, if you search the McAfee community and knowledge base, you can often find articles such as this. It tells you how to block webmail attachments um, and downloads by media type. Now through here, it'll give you a little bit of like the prerequisites needed. So in this instance, the SL, SSL scanner must be above um, the uh, webmail attachment. That makes sense. So if we can download this zip file. View our downloads. And what we can do is you'll see you'll get an XML file. So I'm just going to drag that XML file out. And that XML file will contain the um, rule sets for creating uh, what we want. So to block the uploading and downloading of attachments. So we come back to our McAfee gateway. If we go to our policy, rule sets, add from library, and what you can see down the bottom here is import a file. If we go and find our XML file here, you can see that it has now brought in a webmail attachment filter. So let's resolve our clink conflicts um, and we're going to by referencing existing objects and select OK. Now I've completely brought this in at the wrong level, so we want to just bring this out to the root and then drag it up. Uh, let's drag it up to just below common rule sets. Now if we expand it out, we can see that there's two rules that have been created, webmail upload and web download. Now I don't want to block the um, downloading of files, I just want to block the uploading of files. So I'm going to disable this rule here and hit save changes. As you can see we've now disabled the webmail download rule. And it's worth working out how the whole rule works. If we look at the top level of the rule set we can see that it actually has a criteria set on it. If we look into this we can see that actually it has a rule that says if the URL category is webmail, then to apply the rule sets underneath. We'll then have this rule set here, which is the, um, for blocking the upload of media types. And we just have a look at this rule here. We can simply say that if the media type is at least one in the webmail attachment upload block list, then it's simply going to block it. If we double click, we can add any kind of different um, attachments that we want to block the uploading of. So, if we go into documents, we can see we've got Word, PDFs, Excel. Um, so, let's look at uh, rich text. 
Yeah, we can see we can block rich text. So we click OK. We can see that we've added this to the list and select Save Changes. So if I now log on to my Hotmail accounts, okay, and try and create a new email, uh, email to myself, and insert an attachment and insert a rich text file. We can see that there's an error in uploading this file and it's not allowing it. If we disable this rule and try again, we can see it's worked with no problem. So this is a good uh, method we can use for blocking certain attachment types being sent through web-based applications. So the purpose of this was not to show you everything that's possible because that's just not, not practical. What I'm trying to do is show you how we can use both the community plus built-in functionality to, to achieve our desired configuration, which may be to kind of manage some kind of uh, data, um, data leak protection, etc. So I hope this video has been useful and thank you for watching. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.